Hi everyone, if you're like me, you don't get a chance to unbox a brand new instrument every single day. And I got a good one for you today. It's a Kisley, a DMM6500. It's a 6.5 digit bench multimeter, the latest generation from Kisley or Tektronics. And supposedly it's a very, very nice piece of gear. So I wanted to share with you, well, the box, but also what's inside. See what the accessories are, how well the packaging is made, the unit itself obviously, and I'm also going to give you my first impressions regarding the unit. So I hope you're interested, because I certainly am. Let's get started, let's see what's in there. So just a quick note before I start unpacking. Uh, as you know, it's always a good practice to check the integrity of the packaging, and also you're not supposed to open these instruments with a knife. And I know some of us like big knives, but I'm going to use a pair of scissors to do that. It's a very nice box, it feels quite sturdy. Uh, it comes apparently directly from China, which I don't believe is a problem, but uh, it's pretty interesting because I ordered it directly from Tektronix in the US. Um, let's see what's in there. Okay. We have a few things. We have an accessory pouch. So it has a USB cable. It's a standard, apparently, yeah, USB 2.0, A to B, pretty standard. We have a set of test leads. Apparently, it's just the test leads themselves. So there's no, no alligator clips, no accessory. It's just a pretty plain um, set of test leads. I'm a bit disappointed, to be honest with you, because uh, I also got a set of test leads from Agilent. And so that's an old one, but it comes with a few accessories like um, some clips to grip wires and things like that. So, hey, Kesley, you're a bit cheap here. So I have some README here, which I'm going to read. Hello, this is my cat Sasha. He's also curious. And I have the unit itself. Okay. There's also the power, the power cord. It's a US power cord because obviously I'm in the US. So that's what cats do, right? Let's get the cat out of the view and the box out of the view too. On top of the unit, we have the calibration certificate. Because it's a uni new unit, obviously. Pretty standard calibration certificate. Let me show you. Pretty standard stuff. What's interesting is that it's actually a traceable certificate because I have all the serial numbers for all the instruments that they have used to calibrate the unit. I also have um, their own calibration expiration date. That's pretty good. Um, that's an interesting one, it's in Chinese. Unfortunately, I don't read Chinese. I wish I did, but I have no idea what's in there. Uh, it doesn't look... Oh, it's in English on the other side. It's just an environmental disclosure report uh, to tell me where are the dangerous chemicals in there, but I don't plan to eat this product, so I should be fine. I'm still going to keep it with the, the rest of the documentation. Let's look at the unit itself now. So I got the standard model. I didn't purchase any option with it. The reason is that even the base unit is quite featured. So this is the back of the standard unit. We have the main socket here with obviously the input voltage, which you need to check. That's very important. Uh, we have a Ethernet port for communication. We have a USB port. Um, external trigger in, trigger out. These are the um, uh, caps. So if you get, for instance, a GPIB interface, it's going to be there in there. 
Uh, I believe you can get a multiplexer card if you want to measure multiple channels at once and put it there. And these are the typical back inputs. The unit is a decent size. It's interesting to compare with some older piece of instrumentation that I have here. So that's not a multimeter. It's a frequency counter. But um, I also have a multimeter, which unfortunately you can't get to see, but it's the same size. So the Kessel is pretty large. It's not a problem, not at all, but it's interesting to compare. Frankly, look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? That big LCD screen? Clearly, we are in 2020. 2020 wasn't necessarily a good year, but we get nice instruments these days. The front of the unit is pretty standard for a multimeter. We have, obviously, the front inputs, uh, a few function buttons. We have the power button here. It's a soft power button. Uh, I would say there's a reason for that. We, we are going to, to, to go there in a few minutes. We also have a USB port, which can probably be used to import scripts, export some screenshots or measurements, and so on. So I'm going to wire this unit, move the camera a little bit, and we're going to start it and see w what happens when I start it. Let's go. I have plugged in the multimeter and to be honest with you, if the function of this instrument is as good as it looks, then it definitely is a killer instrument. Look at that. I've never seen a multimeter as gorgeous. I'm going to turn it on and we are going to check a few things, see the time it takes for it to boot, see if there is any uh, big noise from a fan or something like that and uh, I'm going to show you the user interface, so let's go! Okay, so it took the unit a bit less than 20 seconds to boot, between 15 and 20 seconds. Uh, I would say it's a reasonable time for the unit to boot considering all the features that it has. And uh, clearly the user interface is gorgeous. The display is extremely visible and readable. Something to note here is that some of you have their multimeter on the table. Some others have them up in the stack on a shelf. What I see if I move my head around the screen above, below, left and right is that I don't see any dead angle. Well, at least for the normal use cases. So good job, Kisley here. Um, no matter how your lab and your bench is set up, you're probably going to have no issue with the viewing angle of the LCD screen. So that's pretty good. The user interface is it's a tactile LCD display. You can operate all of the functions with your fingers like that. One thing to note is that it's extremely responsive. Um, there is no visible lag, no visible refresh. Uh, maybe I see it refreshing very quickly from top to bottom when I click a button, but maybe, maybe just my eyes playing a trick on me. But clearly it, it, it's not lagging at all. Uh, very, very responsive. It's even faster than some of the cell, phone, cell phones I've seen. So. Good job, Kisley, on that too. Um, when we switch, switch functions, it's pretty responsive too. We have a few relays clicking on the back, but that's normal. And one of the reasons why I bought this unit is for this. It has an integrated graphing capability. There are some situations where you need to do some data logging, you need to check how a certain voltage or, or, or current is evolving, but you don't want to take the oscilloscope, you don't need a sample rate, or maybe your oscilloscope is used for something else. So you can just fire up the multimeter, configure the graphic mode, and maybe it's enough. So that's great. It's the first time I see a multimeter with that capability. It's really interesting. You can have both the, multimeter, the main multimeter display and then the graphic on the back, or you can also move to a view with 
the graph full screen and look at that. You can zoom with your fingers. And frankly, I believe it is useful because if you're looking, for instance, at the RC charge or disk charge curve of, of a capacitor or something like that, uh, you don't necessarily want to have to go into the menus, even if it's not that hard with the touch screen, but sometimes it's good to just zoom in. Uh, you can stop the trigger and then you can look into the area of interest. Um, then you can restart the trigger. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty nice instrument. And even look at that. It took into account the time during which the trigger was stopped. Yeah, good job on the user interface. Very convenient. Uh, something to know about this unit also is that it's programmable and not programmable in the sense of the previous instruments. You can actually run scripts inside the unit. For basic test and measurements application, for instance, in production, for testing, uh, you can just put a script inside the unit. It's good. It's going to run it and then it can, for instance, display a big pass or fail on the screen. This is a departure from the previous dumb instruments that we've been using for decades. It's a really, really new paradigm for multimeters, in my opinion. It's really nice for production testing. And I'm sure we'll have more and more applications because we also have capability to load applications from the USB port. So it seems to me pretty clear that Kisly has some ambition with that. I can't wait to see what's going to be available in that. Um, something else to see is that the refinement of that unit doesn't stop at the user interface. For instance, look at that. That's the current measurement input. So why am I excited about the current measurement input? Well, because if you blow the fuse, you press it, you turn it, and you get immediate access to the fuse. You don't have to go on the back of the unit to remove everything, remove the wires, unstack the instrument. and No, it's just directly accessible from the front. So that's extremely convenient, especially for professional applications where you don't have the time to deal with um, stacking and unstacking the instrument. And also, if it's rack mounted or anything like that, you also want to have front access, even if for some rack mounting application, you may use the rear input. But anyway, that's just uh, a nice refinement here. I wanted to, to mention it because it's good. Um, something else that you may want to know, especially if you happen to see that video in the future and say you get a second hand unit, um, please make sure it has the latest firmware because the early units had a bug with the firmware which was draining the internal battery. And the problem when that happens is that you may lose the calibration data, So I believe. So yeah, just make sure the unit you're using has the latest firmware. It cannot hurt. You're going to get maybe new features anyway. So yeah, that, that's uh, important, especially for this type of instrument, uh, which is not so dumb anymore. So there's a lot of processing power in it. Speaking of processing power, uh, part of the reason why the display is so reactive is that there is actually a ded dedicated processor just for the front panel here. So that explains a lot of the reactivity you see here. Um, yeah, I didn't want to go uh, to do an in-depth review. There are some pretty nice reviews on YouTube anyway. What I wanted to show you was just unboxing the unit, starting it up, seeing the user interface, without spending hours looking into details. But one thing is important to me, and I'm still going to do a quick test. So when you are in continuous mode, in a continuity testing mode, sorry, uh, you want to make sure there's no lag because sometimes some multimeters lag. So if you do a very fast contact like this, some multimeters are not going to register it. So I'm simply going to do a very quick test and see if that's the case for this one or if it doesn't suffer from, the, from this problem. So let's see. So you see, that's good. If I just slightly touch the probes, it's beeping immediately. And I wasn't capable of missing um, a beep, essentially. So that's exactly what you want. There is, however, a guaranteed time for the beeper to run, which is good because it ensures that you're going to hear it. The tone for the beep is noticeable. Um, it's not too strong, not too low, so that's fine. And speaking about tones and sounds, there is a fan in the unit. I highly doubt you can hear it. 
The reason for that is that it's actually not loud at all. It might be temperature controlled because when I started it, um, I could hear that it was running first at a slower speed, then a bit faster. So it might be temperature controlled, but for a regular indoor environment with normal indoor temperatures, the fan is really not noticeable. So yeah, pretty good unit, um, very nice. And one last note before I leave you, I was mentioning the soft power button. And the reason for that is probably because of the reference. Uh, it's very likely, I believe, that they keep the reference circuit active all the time so that when you start the unit, you don't have to wait for possibly tens of minutes or even hours for the reference to heat up and stabilize. So that would explain why you have that soft button and not a um, hard, hardware latching button like to select between the front and the back panel. My first impressions, well, I'm delighted I bought this unit. It's a very, very nice instrument, very visible. Um, it's modern. It offers some interesting capabilities that we don't have with the um, older instruments. It looks good. It works good. It's, re it's responsive. And I'm sure it's going to serve me well for definitely a few years and probably a few decades. Because if you look on eBay or <laughs> the other website, you, you have Kisly instruments which are still selling today on the second hand market, which have been refactored decades ago. Yeah, welcome to the family, DMM6500. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was interesting. If you have any question, if you want me to test something, please let me know in the comments. I'll see if I can uh, test it for you. And yeah, for now, highly recommended. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching and see you next time.